been going for about a mile or so now. With this truck up here, driving right next to this car at the same speed on I-5, which is 74 miles an hour. So yeah, technically we're, we're speeding by 4 miles an hour, but anybody who's anybody knows that if you drive on I-5 and you're going to be in the left lane, you need to do 80 or you're going to be getting passed by people that are, you know, flipping you off if you're going too slow, or you won't get over. And um, all these guys are just on a mission here. They are car blocking me. Oh, well, there's a gap now, though. I wonder if the truck's going to get over or if he's just going to, like, you know, creep along until the car decides to catch up with him again. Because obviously no one's going to zoom in and try and pass him on the right like that, so... Not that it's a big deal. But it's not. I bet that's loud. Going to go and jump. But, um, you know, it's kind of annoying. I mean, how it, when I'm on the freeway, I, I know if I'm driving at the same speed as a car next to me and the two of us are blocking all the lanes and we're going slow, <laughs> I, I think I would know that. I guess people just don't give up. Rats patootie. Come and set his cruise control on. Come speeding up on the Strider truck. Not Ryder, Strider. <clears throat> this is a, a heavy duty earring place for me. The cell towers are ridiculous here or something. I feel pressure on my head and it starts to hurt kind of. And my upper cranium goes. Technology great. Wow. Science has really taken us far. We're living longer, healthier lives thanks to the vaccines and doctors and Western medicine. We're living longer, healthier lives. I mean lives. <laughs> doctors are, coming, are giving us longer, healthier lives thanks to their treatments. order of any significant size, a union, a trade group, you know, medical, the military, anything with an established rank and file structured system order and it that is the authority on something, anything really, has been corrupted. It doesn't mean that everything they say is untrue, it means that they are the experts on most everything, like, like science. What they've done with science is they took it out of the hands of people to do experiments on their own and verify things, and they went into the theoretical science, and then these power brokers with all the money in the world basically started their own collegiate system, and they started their own magazines, and they started their own peer review, and they started their own, you know, publishing houses with, you know, fictional stories that support their, their bullshit too. They seeded the minds of, you know, mostly uh, Europe and America, but, you know, and Australia, but the rest of the world as well, to a large degree, with their ideas about space and orbits and aliens and blah, 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 all this shit. And it ain't real. It's not real. You know, I thought it was a joke when I first looked into this fake space thing. It's like, yeah, right, fake space, come on. I mean, it's one thing to say we didn't go to the moon, but it's another thing to say that space is fake. Well, if we didn't go to the moon, we didn't go to space, and if we didn't go to space, then how do we know it's even real, right? Yeah. Look into it if you haven't. It's ridiculously simple. And there's nothing that, you know, anybody can tell anybody that's going to suddenly, aha, I get it now. I mean, that, that can happen, but it would have to be somebody who was, you know, intelligent enough and had enough experience in in life to, to to understand the you know the simplicity of it. It's really it's simple. The proofs of Earth not being a spinning globe are very fundamental, simple things. Then if you understand physics to a good degree, you'll know it's true. So that's how I know the collegiate system is a fraud and all 
those types of things because, uh, well, at least there are plenty of smart people out there, and they're they're smarter than me in, in these things. But uh, when it comes to you know mathematics and, and, and whatnot, but I tell you what, the paid off buyers are like, I, I, you know, I guess. I mean, money's not real either. You do realize that there's unlimited funding for anything they want to do. You know, it's only real for poor people. If you're at the top of the pyramid structure where the money is, you know, kept in a computer, it's kept as a number in a computer that gets doled out to certain people, what does it matter to you if there's, a, you know, a, a, what is it, the free market? You know, what would that do for you? It would mean nothing. Or if there was supply and demand, it would mean nothing. Or if there was a big, big, you know, damaging hit to the economy, that you're the guy that owns all the banks and, and makes the money, what does it mean to you? It means nothing. It doesn't matter how much the money is said to be worth or not with inflation. All that matters is that you're the one who controls it. And you control everything. And it doesn't matter if everybody's happy and, hey, look at all the money I'm making, I'm buying a new house. Or everybody's broke as shit and they're living in the streets while the houses rot because nobody can live in them because they can't afford to rent them or buy them. It makes no difference to the guy who owns all the land and all the businesses and all the parks and all, all the people. Money's not real. It's a concept that we apply to our lives. But in doing so, we subject ourselves to being controlled by it. I know when when the people, society allowed itself to, you know, or, or allowed or decided to, either way, move into cities, quit being out in the farms and the you know rural areas, and, you know, stop stop living that type of life, you know, rural agrarian and, and uh, you know some hunting and, and whatnot and, and small communities. They all wanted to go to the city where all the action was, and get rich, right? And they could buy all this stuff up, buy their land, buy the house. So people have been migrating into cities. And now they're trying to say the world's overpopulated. Because the cities are so packed. But they're just packed because there's been a steady migration of people from rural areas into the cities for oh, 150, 200 years now. And uh, we pretty much got all the people into the cities at this point. And the people in the country areas, you know, or those who work for a big corporation or the government that owns all the land and all the rights to things on the land and in the land. And they won't let anybody go out and just use the land to live on, you know, to grow grow a garden and, uh, and whatnot. You can't do that unless you, you know, make some money in the city and go buy a piece of land that's at these ridiculously stupid overinflated prices. Which really means no nothing to corporations because corporations are all under the same umbrella of the bank guy that makes the money and doesn't care what the economy's like because he runs and owns everything, no matter what. Kind of like God, in a way. Except on Earth. What an asshole. You know, people think the economy is some independent thing. It, it's not. It's a contrived event. It's a contrived system. It's controlled, utterly. It's like the housing system, you know. The reason there's homeless people everywhere is because housing has been turned into the basis for the money supply. You know, we base our money off of housing and house prices, which is controlled by what? By banks, what they'll lend, the appraisers who work for the banks, who decide what the land's worth and the house is worth. Banks that won't lend money for you to get a to get land, they'll lend money for a home as long as you're going to go into massive amounts of debt. They'll make the loan to you, but and, you know, if your credit's decent enough. But if you're not willing to put yourself in a shitload of debt, <laughs> I should have said a fuckload of debt because we just passed that that uh, Amazon truck, but I'll get to that. If you want to put yourself in massive debt, they'll give you a loan for a house, you know, and a little bit of land it's on. But if you find a great deal on, you know, 20 acres of land and all you need is like, you know, eight thousand dollars to get it or something no no that bank ain't gonna give you shit because you could pay that loan off and then you'd own it and they wouldn't be holding the notes on it and they don't want that because they take it all back again the reverse mortgage is just a way to you know 
to a, as a retirement fund for people who've been you know, buying their homes instead of leaving them to their children or you know keeping them in the family so that the family for future generations has some place to live they sell it back to the bank and then sells it to somebody else or tears it down or just lets it sit vacant They'll let it sit the banks will let property sit vacant until they are ruined before they'll let anybody move into them even if that person is living in the bushes a half a block away no 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 this house will rot to the ground or you'll go to jail if you go in there sucker don't you even think about it this is bank property and it always has been and it always will be apparently the only place you might be free is on the sea still subject to maritime law but at least there's no taxes you know no property taxes because there's no property <laughs> who owns the water well the Coast Guard and the Navy does, really. And they're all a bunch of, you know, sold out evil scumbags. I mean, you wouldn't know it by talking to them. There's lots of good people in the Navy. There's lots of good people in the Coast Guard. There's lots of good people in every branch of service. Every genocide's been carried out by good people just doing their job. You get, you know, they're good people. They're not necessarily bad to their families, and they're not unpleasant to be around, and they're caring, and if you needed help, they help you. If you're stranded, you know, they give you a ride. But they work for Satan. They work for Satan Co. You know, it doesn't matter if you're the if you're sorting mail, you know, in the in the basement of some building for the army, or you're a mail clerk, you know, you sort mail in a basement. That's all you do. Or you're you wash dishes. Well, they don't even wash dishes anymore. They subcontract out because it costs less for some reason to hire a second company to come in and provide meals than it does to make your own guys who got to work for whatever you pay them do it themselves. Apparently, uh, you know, nobody at the military got the memo that it costs less to do it yourself than it does to have someone come do it. It's just like your home. If you could do your plumbing yourself, you don't hire a plumber to come in and charge you $5,000 to do your plumbing. When you can do it for, you know, 1200 bucks if you can do it yourself. I mean, that's just common sense, but for some reason they've convinced the, the people that, that corporations and, and sourcing these things out, you know, farming it out to their, their friends' pet companies, you know, is, is the more efficient way to go. That just gets into a whole long, deluded story. But anyway, the homes. You know, if you control...